The Water Innovation Labs are front-running, immersive leadership training programs designed for our emerging leaders who are 18 to 35 years of age. And the key piece of the Water Innovation Labs is to build 21st century skills. So what we mean by that is skills in creativity, uh, complexity and problem solving skills, understanding how to really collaborate interdisciplinarily, uh, and focusing on collaborative innovation. The end goal of most of our Water Innovation Labs is to create these collaborative innovation projects or ideas that emerge from a process we guide our participants through uh, to address real-world problems in the water space. Hello, hi, uh, I'm Mahesh Nepani and I'm from Nepal. And I'm originally from an indigenous community in central Mexico, um, part of the Pame people. I'm a traditional owner of um, Melbourne, so I'm a Wurundjeri man. I grew up in southwestern Victoria on a farm near Hamilton. This is our first Australian edition of the Water Innovation Lab and we're very excited about it. It was very important for us to set the foundations of this Water Innovation Lab by starting at looking at Aboriginal history here on the land and that began with an Indigenous walking tour on the Yarra River to understand that 60,000 years before this moment in time people lived on this land and they understood this land better than anyone else today can. We're going on a journey of, of knowledge today. My job today in the short time that we've got is try to change your concept of reality. I'm going to be stripping away the concrete out of the Crown Casino over there and try to get you to look at this place and your place in it a little bit differently as well. It's so important to be able to come here and respect the lands that we're on and in that way also receive that medicine, receive the beauty of that. And recognizing that all these struggles from around the globe are so connected, that these indigenous struggles um, a lot have so many similarities throughout, right? And I can hear this story and I can cry because I feel those tears as well back home. And you can tell that the land was happy that we were being introduced to it in that way. We need to continue the legacy of all of our traditional ancestors and we must care for the land and equally the spirit of the land and respect both deeply. For it is only then that the land will truly be able to care for us. And from that perspective, we then went and looked at the Western Treatment Plant, which is a state-of-the-art facility um, and also a bird sanctuary. And that allowed a deeper reflection on the different aspects of how we manage our water to understand the social and the technical pieces. Um, today has been a really great experience because for me personally, because I've had the chance to come out to my own workplace, incidentally, but in particular, it's been great to have everyone else out here too and see everyone else's different perspectives from around the world when it comes to sewage treatment and the challenges everyone's facing. It's a, it's a blur between uh, the artificial and the natural. And so a lot of these ponds, they look more like wetlands than they do actual lagoons of a traditional um, wastewater treatment plant that I'm familiar with in, within Alberta, Canada. So the process so far has been amazing. You've got a room full of brilliant minds, young minds, who have been challenged. Speaking to a couple of them today, you've said looking at a problem from this aspect would never have been done in my workplace or anywhere else. So they're really challenging what they know and how they learn. Many of us have been to conferences where you're in that headspace and you're listening and you come away and you're really motivated and full of new ideas but you don't always have that opportunity to take that into your day-to-day -day work environment and I think this model where you are learning by doing enables you to, to test some of those ideas out as you're learning. It's a fascinating process because what it does is really accelerate um, what otherwise can take quite a long time to define um, in many situations and so these groups have gone very quickly from saying this is the big issue we want to think about to these are the elements of that problem that we think we can address to now considering what a set of solutions might look like. So it's pretty inspiring to see that happening at a pretty rapid pace. Using systems thinking is a very challenging process, um, but our participants have been absolutely incredible. There's such eagerness and interest in learning new ways of thinking and acting. The complex problem that we were looking at addressing is around decision makers lacking the political will for engagement of a variety of stakeholders in making plans for blue-green infrastructure. 
Our main focus is how to appropriately collaborate with traditional owners in the water space and also how to work together um, in a form that's more than just acknowledging traditional owners but engaging appropriately and bringing um, our history and our ideas to work with the non-Indigenous people together. Instead of looking at it, at it from the Western perspective of education, of looking at it from what is the cause and effect, you're looking at it the other way around. So you're looking at the effect of the causes to get the water to where it is today. I think we've all come into this with a different idea of even what innovation means and how we innovate. Um, and it's been really good because I've learnt a lot of, I guess, tools and processes and different ways of thinking that I'm going to definitely start exploring a bit more. But it is, it's one of those things where we like to work in our comfort zones and really where we innovate is outside of those. For me, it's been incredibly invigorating to meet all of these inspiring people from around the world who are all doing different uh, things within the water industry but all share common values and are all very passionate about making change. I think the impact of this exercise will be not only will participants have built those connections and understand how um, they can collaborate with people from different backgrounds and with different um, perspective to generate better outcomes, they can also look at things in a different way and ask more informed questions to come um, up with more holistic solutions. So some of these connections are already forming and that's really exciting to see. There's already been lots of questions about involving Indigenous communities and trying to do exchanges between Australia, New Zealand, Canada, US. That's amazing to see. Oh, it's been inspiring. All these young people in a room with great ideas. I think water attracts people that want to affect change and make a difference and that's really been reflected in the room, I think. I want to see these in every state. I want to see them in every region of Victoria would be fantastic to have great minds sit down together and challenge one another.